Ignore what I've typed on the screen for the moment. Let's review in what kind of cases the rule that marginal revenue equal mar equals marginal cost, or in other words, marginal profit equals zero, w will have problems obtaining for you the profit maximizing location. In the first situation I discussed, we have profit versus quantity. We've got two places where margin profit is equal to zero. This one and this one. So here, if you just use the rule margin profit should be zero, you'd have two candidates for Q star. And you wouldn't know whether Q star was this one or this one. How bad is that? Well, it means you can't simply say margin profit equals zero or margin revenue equals marginal cost. You have to do more work. But it's not too hard. You have two candidates for the Q star. What you then do, if you have all the numbers or if you have the graph, is you plug in those two candidates and see which one gave I a profit. So that's bad and it means that you can't simply use margin profit equals zero, but it's not too bad. There's a way around it. In the except second example I discussed, profit looked like this, and there is no point where marginal profit equals zero. Even at at the beginning, the tangent line was like that, so, and that's not horizontal. So this is more problematic. There's no place where marginal profit equals zero. What do you do? Well, well, if you have the graph, then you can see that what you ought to do is set Q equals zero. That's the maximum profit. And usually in these kind of cases, that's the answer. That when if there's no place where marginal profit equals zero, then as we'll see later, you usually just set Q equal to zero. There's a third possibility that I didn't talk about earlier that's actually even more problematic about when uh, marginal profit equals zero doesn't tell you what you ought to do. And that's this one. Here, th there are several problems here. Uh, one of them is there are two places where marginal profit equals zero. That tangent line and that tangent line. So you have two candidates. In that case, in that sense, this is similar to the first graph I drew. Let me call this case A, call this case B, call this case C. So C is similar to A in that you have two potential candidates. And you could approach this the same way you approach case A, by figuring out what the profit is in these two different places and seeing which one gives higher. You'll notice that the, f the first place, this one here, is actually a pro local profit minimum point. It's not a profit maximum point. Profit minimum points also have marginal profit equal to zero. But th that's not the end of the problems with this case. If you did approach it just like case A and you calculated profit this point and calculated profit at this point, what you'd find is that profit at at the second point, at this point, is the is the bigger one, and you might say, oh okay, that's Q star, and you'd be wrong.
because the largest profit in this case occurs here where q equals 0 and where marginal profit is clearly not 0. The, the tangent line at this point is not, it's not horizontal at all. It's like that. So if you just applied marginal profit equals 0 in KC, you'd, you'd end up with the wrong conclusion. You'd, you'd, you'd end up coming here when actually you ought to be at Q equals 0. So these three cases are all cases in which simply applying marginal profit star equal to zero doesn't work. It doesn't tell you where Q star actually is. It's easy to find where Q star is if you have a graph, but usually you won't have graphs. And so what I've written on the left is a whole bunch of algebra that we need to go through because if we don't have graphs, or we, at least if we don't have graphs of profit, then we need to have some other tool of handling situations like these situations I call here A, B, and C. So the theme of this whole video is going to be how do you make sure that you can handle the cases when simply applying marginal profit equal to zero doesn't work. Let's go to the upper left. Number one here. If quantity of output is greater than zero, then profit is total revenue minus total cost, which is total revenue minus, then in parentheses, fixed cost plus variable cost, because that's what total cost is. And if you get rid of the parentheses, you get the last statement here. Total revenue minus fixed cost minus variable cost. Statement number two. If Q is equal to zero, profit is total revenue minus total cost, which again is total revenue minus open parentheses, fixed cost plus variable cost, close parentheses, equals. Well, total revenue is zero if you're not selling anything, because if you're not selling anything, your customers don't give you any money. And variable cost is also zero if you're not producing anything, because if you're not producing anything, you don't buy any of the variable inputs, and so you don't spend any money on them. So the only thing that's left at the end here is minus fixed cost. Next step. Two is better than one. Now let me pause. Because that is going to be the theme for all the rest of the typewritten comments. Two is better than one. Two is setting Q equals zero. 1 is setting q greater than 0. So if 2 is better than 1, then you want to set q equals 0 instead of setting q greater than 0. What we have after this expression is called the shutdown rule. Oh. The shutdown rule is what you use to supplement the m pi star equal to zero rule that we used earlier. Simply applying m pi star equals zero sometimes doesn't work. It's not enough. You need something else besides m pi equals zero that's going to correct m pi equals zero if m pi equals zero misleads you. And it does mislead you sometimes. In, in, in particular, it, it misleads you in, in case C in this point here, where m pi equals zero. I mean, it could mislead you in this point as well. But in both, they're both misleading because the optimal place isn't where m pi equals zero. So m pi, the rule, the m pi equals zero rule needs some help. And what's going to help the m pi star equals zero rule is the shutdown rule that we're developing here. And the shutdown rule 
is what happens when 2 is better than 1. As again, 2 says q is equal to 0, 1 says q is greater than 0, so if 2 is better than 1, then shut, shutting down, which means q is greater than 0, is better. So let's develop the algebra of the shutdown rule. 2 is better than 1 if the bottom line of 2, which was minus fc, the profit of 2, which is minus fc, is better than the profit of 1, which is this. So that's what I wrote here. This is the profit of 2, and this is the profit of 1. And if the profit of 2 is better than the profit of 1, then 2 is better than 1. Add minus fc to both sides of that equation, uh, to both sides of that inequality. That gets you the second term. Add vc to both sides of that inequality. That gets you the expression that I label number 3. Vc is greater than Tr. So that's one general version of the shutdown rule. The most general version of the shutdown rule is that if Vc is greater than Tr, you want to shut down. It, you just ignore the m pi star equals 0 rule, you want to shut down. Now I discuss two special cases. The first special case, if the firm is competitive, and total revenue, which in general is p of q times q, is just equal to p times q, because p is a constant if the firm is competitive. So equation 3, or inequality 3, then means vc is greater than p times q, or dividing both sides of that inequality by p, um, I'm sorry, by q, vc divided by q is greater than p, and vc divided by q is average variable cost. So you end up with, oh, sorry about that, you end up with average variable cost greater than p. So the basic condition is 3. If the firm is competitive, you've got 4. If the firm is competitive and you're working in the long run, then 4 means 5. The left-hand side of 4 is average variable cost, but in the long run, all costs are variable. And so in the long run, we don't... <coughs> we, there's no need to say average variable cost in the long run because all the costs are variable. We just say average cost. usually we'll be dealing with competitive firms. And so usually, instead of the general form 3, we'll be working either with 4 or 5. So the strategy is this. Tentatively, set marginal profit star equal to 0. And then check the shutdown rule. When we say tentatively set marginal profit star equal to 0, that might generate one potential Q star, or it might generate, for instance, I haven't drawn such a, a case, but let's call this case, I don't know, case D. Okay, case D is the really simple case, where you just have one potential Q star, because you just have one place where marginal profit is equal to zero. So when you, when you tentatively set marginal profit equal to zero. You can have a situation like case D where you get one candidate. A situation like case A where you have two candidates. A situation like case B where you don't have any candidates. Or a situation like case C where you have two candidates. And the A, B, C, and D here, I'm talking about the A, B, C, D on the screen. Of course, that has nothing to do with the, the long-run cases uh, A, B, C, and D that I was talking about before. And that's just 
the ABCD here is just for the screen. So that's the tentatively check, tentatively set in pi star equals zero. Then you need to check the shutdown rule, which means, let's look at four and five. You need to check whether f at those candidate cases, either four is true in the short run or five is true in the long run. And both of those talk about whether price is smaller or bigger than a measure of cost, either average variable cost or average cost. If at your candidate price is bigger than in case four average variable cost or in case five average cost, okay, if price is bigger than that, then you keep that candidate. Because bigger price is good, that means you might want to produce there. If the price is smaller than that, so if equation 4 or equation 5 holds, you throw the candidate away. I mean, the candidate came from tentatively setting margin profit equal to zero, but you have to throw some of those candidates away if they f don't pass the shutdown rule. In this kind of way, by tentatively setting m pi star equals zero, and then checking the shutdown rule, you've supplemented the simple m pi star equals zero rule with another rule, the shutdown rule, that helps you figure out, in cases like the ones I've drawn here in this screen, what the true q star is. It'll turn out that this set, this procedure, in the graph that I labeled A, will show you that you don't want to shut down, and indeed you don't. What you what you want to end up doing is, is producing at that Q star. In B, it will reveal to you that you want to shut down. In C, it'll reveal to you that you want to shut down. The shutdown force is the biggest profit. And it'll and in simple case D, it'll reveal to you that you want you don't want to shut down you want to produce. So this is the procedure you will be following from now on and the shutdown rule means either 4 or 5 depending on whether the firm is competitive and you're in the short run or the firm is competitive and you're in the long run. We're not going to deal with the shutdown rule with non-competitive firms but if you ever have to you go back to the original equation 3, that's true even if the firm is not competitive. So bottom line, set m pi star tentatively equal to zero and then check the shutdown rule, which is checking whether price is bigger than or smaller than average variable cost or whether it's bigger than or smaller than average cost. In terms of memorizing this, the easiest thing to memorize in terms of the shutdown rule is 4. Oops, do that the other way. Because 5 is just a special case of 4 where average variable cost is just is all the costs. So you don't really have to memorize 5. If you know 4 and you know that in the long run all the costs are variable, then 4 is all you need. So to simplify as much as possible. M pi star equals zero and then equation number four.